Nigeria boasts a strong, if not necessarily spectacular history when it comes to strikers. While in the last two decades, fearsome forwards like Nwankwo Kanu, Yakubu Ayigbene and Obafemi Martins have graced some of Europe's biggest leagues, all of them flattered to deceive somewhat in international colours. As a result, the gold standard for Nigerian marksmen remains the great Rashidi Yakini, who is not only the country's all-time leading scorer, but acquired legendary status in Portugal with Vitoria de Setubal in the 1990s. That seems set to change in the 2020s, however. In 2009, the Nigeria Football Federation initiated the Under-13, Under-15 Football Development Program, specifically to address the problem of rampant age cheating in the junior national team, but also with a view to finding and harnessing talent across the country. The result of this effort was global success at Under-17 level in 2013 and 2015, with both crops of talent playing vertical, attacking football and bringing through a number of prospects in attack. That has meant that, despite losing out on many products of its growing European diaspora such as Tammy Abraham, Karim Adeyemi, Dominic Solanke, Noah Okafor and Lucas Mecha, Nigeria nevertheless has an intriguing collection of young strikers emerging all at once. Victor Osimen, Kelechi Iheanacho, Tero Mofi and Tayo Owonyi are all 25 and under and Paul Onuachu, who is the oldest of this elite strike force, still has his peak years ahead of him. Victor Osimen. As a boy, Victor Osimhen had to combine his love for football with menial work and street hawking in order to support his family. He got his break when he attended a public screening exercise for the national under-17 team in preparation for the 2015 Africa Under-17 Cup of Nations. The rest, as the cliche goes, is history. The striker blossomed, becoming top scorer at both the AFCON and the World Cup in Chile later that year and serving notice of his potential. A rough start to his professional career stalled his development, but a loan spell at Belgian club Charleroi in 2018 put him back on track and he's not looked back since. Ossiemen is a quick, rangy striker who typically runs the channels and plays on the shoulder of the opposing defence. Since moving to Lille in 2019, he has worked to incorporate a broader skill set and now at Napoli under Luciano Spalletti, he is the complete centre forward, as adept at bringing others into play as scoring himself. If there is a weakness in Ossiman's play, it is an occasional lack of composure in shooting situations. He will often underestimate how much time he has inside the box, taking shots while slightly off balance. He's also not the most skillful in possession. In spite of these, at 22, Ossiman has already pushed to the front of the queue with the Nigeria national team, claiming the number 9 shirt and posting an average of a goal every other game. Considering what he is already delivering, it is not a stretch to think of his potential as limitless. Kelechi Iheanacho Kelechi Iheanacho was a product of the NFF Under-13 program, progressing through the ranks to the national Under-17 teams for the 2013 AFCON. Initially, he was left out of the starting lineup by coach Manu Gabra, who felt he played to the gallery. However, it became clear Iheanacho was a perfect fit, in fact, for a team encouraged to fly forward as one and interchange positions frequently. His golden ball exploits at the Under-17 World Cup in the United Arab Emirates saw him snapped up by Manchester City, with whom he made a name for himself as a super sub before departing for Leicester City in 2017. It's only in the last 12 months, though, that Iheanacho's Leicester career has really taken flight. A spate of attacking injuries forced Brendan Rodgers to opt for a two-man attack, pairing the 25-year-old with Jamie Vardy for last season's run-in. The result? Iheanacho was a man reborn, and for the first time in close to five years, the Foxes finished the season with a different top goalscorer. Iheanacho is as much a creator as he is a striker, preferring to drop into space to receive the ball and either combine with on-rushing midfielders or play delicate through balls. He's also an accomplished finisher on account of his cultured striking technique. He does, however, demand a strike partnership, as he lacks the speed and physicality to lead the line himself. He's also heavily one-footed, which can make him predictable. He does practically guarantee goals and or assists though, and at the very highest level that remains valuable. Iheanacho has already begun to strike up an understanding with Ossiemen, playing in a slightly deeper role for Nigeria, and will likely continue in this brief for the foreseeable future. Terem Mofi The son of a former goalkeeper, Terem Mofi took the long road to the top after failing to nail down a place with the 2015 Under-17 national team. After that disappointment, he went to the UK, joining Bucksford Football Academy for a year before taking an offer to play in Lithuania. There, he finally began to showcase what he was about, scoring 20 goals to help Modest Ritterai qualify for Europe and catching the eye of Belgian side Kortrijk. 
Belgium proved a similarly fruitful experience for Moffi, who only needed half a season to prove he was ready for a bigger stage. He got that step by moving to Lorient in the summer of 2020 and immediately put Liga on notice. His debut season saw him hit 14 goals and help his side escape the drop by two points, despite having one of the worst defensive records in the division. Moffi is a powerful centre forward with a strong base in terms of skill set. His biggest asset is his movement, as he has a knack for making runs on the blind side of defenders, making him difficult to curtail. He is quick for his size and rarely blasts his finishes, opting instead for precision. That, however, can go against him, and he could do with incorporating greater variety in his finishing. There's also a sense that, while this season has seen him more involved in Lorien's build-up, he does not dominate defenders in the air as one might expect. So far, Moffi's role in the national team has been a bit part one. It remains to be seen whether coach Gemma Vora considers him a serious option. For all his obvious talent, he could get lost in the international shuffle. Paul Onuachu Certainly, no one can accuse Paul Onuachu of not dominating in the air. The 27-year-old is the only member of this shortlist who did not have any affiliation with the Nigeria under-17 national side. Instead, Onuachu came up through the academy system, moving to Danish side Midtjylland via partner club FC Ebede. Standing at over two metres tall, the striker made a name for himself when, in 2016, he scored against Manchester United in a famous 2-1 win in the Europa League. It was a moment that seemed to spark a new confidence in Onuachu, as he went from inconsistent forward to mainstay, hitting over 20 goals in two of the subsequent three seasons to earn a move to Belgian side Genk. The theme held, first a slow start and then an explosion. The Nigerian scored 35 goals for Genk in all competitions in 2020-21, attracting interest from all over Europe. Onuachu is exactly what one might expect in terms of playing style. Strong in aerial duels and good at holding the ball up, while being an assassin when deliveries come into the penalty area. While he towers over most defenders, the Genk man prefers to peel off to the back post and to attack deep crosses rather than stand in the middle of the box. It will come as no surprise that he's not overly quick and his link-up play in tight spaces is a weakness. He's also all right foot. He made headlines back in 2019 when he scored inside eight seconds on his international debut. As a result, he's often viewed as the perfect plan B on Nigeria duty and it's a role that suits him well. Tyro Owonyi Tyro Owonyi's opportunity came from making the most of a fortuitous break, which is a perfect encapsulation of his style as a striker. The Union Berlin man came to the fore when he scored four goals at the 2013 FIFA Under-17 World Cup. However, it was an injury to teammate Isaac's success in the competition that presented Awanyi with his chance. He would not relinquish the position again, and after leading the line for Nigeria at under-20 level as well, the striker was snapped up by Liverpool. Work permit issues prevented him from making an appearance for the Reds, however, and he endured a spate of loans in Belgium and Germany, which made it difficult to put down roots. Now at Union on a permanent basis, he appears to have found a rhythm and consistency and has already hit double digits for goals so far this season. Awanyi is a striker who loves to play on the shoulder of the opposing defence and is explosive in his movements. While not technically accomplished, he makes up for this by getting his shots off very early and will often catch goalkeepers out with even scuffed finishes before they can set their feet. Due to the limited nature of his skill set, he does little work in deeper areas and so requires chances to be fed to him. Awanyi only made his debut for Nigeria in the October international window and remains a viable option in the thinking of the national team selectors. While these five have the strongest cases, there are other forwards worthy of acknowledgement. Sami Nguankwo scored 20 Serie A goals for relegated Crotone last season. Emmanuel Dennis has made quite the impression for his goals and his fouling in the Premier League since joining Watford. Henry Onyekaru is a talented forward and flits in and out of international reckoning. Almiria's Uma Sadiq is another who offers some interest. This just illustrates how deep the pool is going into a pivotal 2022. With Osimhen and Iheanacho leading the line, the Super Eagles have the firepower to make a run at the African Cup of Nations and could be a sneaky dark horse pick for the World Cup in Qatar.